Hi there and welcome to my advanced tips and tricks guide for Perispera. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through a few of the more vital strategies that helped me around the uh, around conquering the mid game. Especially I'm um, going to talk about logistics and a few necessary technologies and a few things between the lines that just helped me out a lot uh, in uh, getting along with that game. So. Um, the safe game here is taken from um, a fairly uh, terraformed planet mid game. You see here the network is uh, pretty expanded. My um, starting area was here, so we expanded over the planet um, thoroughly. So, first up, I've seen that a lot of people were um, having trouble with the logistics with that game, so I'm going to talk about logistics first. So, a, few, a handful of tricks that helped me a lot here were the following. First up, spam those worker hubs. As you see here, I have a lot of worker hubs on the map, um, distributed on the map, and a lot of them have very um, low uh, workloads in general. It doesn't matter that they have work wor low workloads, I'm sorry, um, because a worker hub only costs you a power um, amount of 2 MW, and apart from that, you'll only need to uh, construct a worker now and then because they, uh, they, they get destroyed uh, at some time. But apart from that, no problems involved whatsoever. So as soon as you're able to whip up the materials necessary for workers in a larger scale, spam those worker um, hubs. It doesn't solve your problem on its own, but it does alleviate uh, the workload by a lot. And um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, because I felt like that helped me a lot too, was um, setting up um, storage centers in the vicinity of um, mines, especially um, at hubs where you have more than uh, only two or three mines, uh, like uh, sometimes situations like these down here um, are um, arising where you have several um, several um, extraction sites. A storage center has one purpose. It helps you that your um, extractors don't back up their um, output because uh, what happens quite often is something like here, wonderful example, I guess my uh, workload is not, uh, my workers are not numerous enough at this point. So um, as soon as there's too much output in a factory, it, it will back up. And um, having a nice amount of storage centers in the vicinity helps because your um, drones will then uh, go over there and uh, put that stuff more often into the warehouse. And you don't really suffer any penalties for allocating lots and lots of materials. So storehouses in the vicinity of your extractors help a lot. They cost a little bit of power, but uh, power is completely irrelevant um, once you're deeper in the mid game. It's far as my experiences went. And um, last but not least, what helped me a lot was um, researching the road technologies and uh, using them. So basically, as we see here, those black roads are upgraded roads. I upgraded pretty much um, everything um, which is uh, which was on which was used. You can upgrade those roads by just uh, clicking here. And then you click at an endpoint, and then everything along the road is being upgraded. I'm not too happy with that mechanic. I really, really hope that uh, some at some point later down down the road with the patches, we will be able to upgrade our roads some somehow handier. Dear developer of the game, it would be really, really awesome. Um, but um, long story short, upgrade your roads. It will um, make your drones ride a lot faster. But from my experience, the improved roads tech is uh, pretty enough. I didn't use the fastest roads too much because after that comes the Hyperloop. And the Hyperloop is uh, a real godsend. Like um, Hyperloops are easily explained. You have um, an ending station. You build one here and you see here already how they will connect and um, hyperloops are pretty much the fastest roads available in game and I'm going to show you how it'll work so um, we're gonna construct one here because I don't have any hyperloop access here so whoops that didn't go in sometimes it does that and uh, now we're gonna um, focus that building and I'm gonna fast forward a moment until it's done so 
Hyperloops are um, basically highways um, for your base. And as you see here, your drones soar over these uh, lines. And um, with a um, with a Hyperloop network, you can easily create um, high-speed um, connections between portions of your base, which are usually pretty um, hard to be uh, connected. And honestly, rushing towards the Hyperloop technology is so worth it. It's one of the most powerful technologies um, of the mid game because it really helps you so much. But there's one downside to that. Now we finished uh, the Hyperloop station. To connect them, you go here, connect Hyperloop, and then you just mouse over one of the stations that are uh, in the vicinity. Um, the downside here, 20 carbon and 20 uh, steel. That stuff is just a resource uh, drain par excellence so you will need a lot of carbon and sto uh, steel for that but it's so worth it using them because it really really eases up your uh, logistic problems so um this space later down uh, the series i'm recording is connected fully with um hyperloop um access points and i dropped the hyperloop i like to drop the hyperloop access points um like a uh, good example would be here that would be a very good point uh, drop point for the hyperloops because um oh well too many icons there's a uh, there are my steel factories here and there's more industry here and having a end point for the hyperloop would be very beneficial because your other um, areas of um, the colony are now able to output their materials quite directly to those factories. So um, endpoints of the Hyperloops are um, very good at the um, in the vicinity of uh, manufacturing um, facilities. All right, that's enough of that. Uh, enough about logistics and such things. I want to talk about expansions um, too, because as you see here, um, the planet is turning blue and blue and blue, and uh, that's water. So the game always warns you about uh, flood sites. You see here, flood zone. It's being depicted there, right next to being uh, next to too far and no maintenance and whatnot. Um, these flood zones, whenever you find resources there, grab them first because they will become inaccessible later down the road, and uh, it's really useful to. Uh, deplete those um, deposits like this was a 3000 uh, unit chemical deposit so quite worth it um, but apart from that expansion in this game is just good expand whenever you can expand as much as you can because as I have mentioned before there is no penalty for stockpiling like a, like a crazy um, fella so basically if you're up to it once you have um, the power um, under control I should have talked about that before but that in a minute once you have enough power you can you're fairly good um it's a good advice to just plop down mines wherever you want to smack down more worker hubs there's really no uh bad thing about uh being overstocked with resources power wise i can't uh recommend the fission plant technology enough because this uh, opens up uranium mines and then you can build fission plants of course later uh there's even better um power um, technologies but for the mid game I found that the fission plants are just uh, super good for expansion in general like uh, 100 megawatt per um, per plant and uh, the only thing they need is to be set up and they'll need uh, 10 units of uranium once you build them so uranium takes a uh, very very long per unit to be mined so I've set up uh, a little base here with uranium mines but as you see here there's tons and tons of uranium deposits here so researching fission mines very early is very very good in my opinion another thing I really discovered to be very useful is um, whenever you have um, an allocation of uh, materials build a factory there so um to put that uh into practice you see here there's water and chemicals around here this is a wonderful spot to drop down a food factory because um the necessary materials for food are already in the vicinity so it's going to be super easy for your drones to um to supply them your drones are dumb okay they are dumb i'm not gonna um, sugarcoat that they are just like that but you can make the life of your drones a lot easier if you just uh, drop down the production sites 
into the vicinity where the actual materials are being uh, gathered. Of course, deposits run dry and these uh, these things are not um, stay productive, for, productive forever, but it's uh, not the end of the world if uh, the logistics axis is uh, turning from optimal to suboptimal. Your, your drones are dumb, but they're not uh, completely um, incompetent, so <laughs> that's that. Um, apart from that, expand as much as you can. That means uh, I found I grew very fond of this strategy of uh, deploying a lot of uh, scanners wherever I can because these scanners only cost you 5 megawatt. Once you have fission plants or better things, um, the highest cost factor will be the electronics. And believe me, at some point you're not gonna care about electronics anymore and uh, the more um, scanners you have deployed the faster you're um, uncovering new deposits and depending on your difficulty level this game is mo this game's difficulty is mostly centered around the um, resource race like uh, you have to expand fast enough to uh, gather new uh, resources before the game shuts the door on you which brings me to the next topic, um, resources. Value chemicals and water very, very highly. They are um, necessary to generate research points. I, fo I focus on this uh, so much because you are able to build uh, greenhouse gas factories and oxygen release plants, which both consume um, water and uh, chemicals to create O2 or um, greenhouse gases. Only do that if you really have no other um, option to achieve your goals because chemicals and water are quite limited resources and therefore I would always recommend you not to use those. Instead use other resources first like uh, the um, other technologies like um, what was it again? Uh, I can look it up here. I made good uh, um, experiences with the, the methane asteroids, with the space mirror array. Heck, even the greenhouse gas importation uh, thing is also an, an option because you'll, well, you use chemicals, but apart from that you use other, um, you, you, you spare the other materials. It's not that important, but you always will need a certain amount of water and uh, chemicals to keep um, producing your um, research points. I think you really have to overdo it with your uh, terraforming um, endeavors to run into a problem with that, but I wanted to uh, talk about it. And then there's of course the option of new landing sites. Um, you can do that, but you must not do that, um, or well, you, you do not, no, sorry, you don't have to do that, wrong wording. I'm working wonderfully fine with, one, with just one base here. But it's really neat to have another option of uh, going uh, somewhere else. But uh, long story short, for me, don't use the landing site if you don't really need to. That's just uh, the thing I wanted to say. So apart from that, I feel like uh, the most important uh, things are now mentioned. Um, of course, always keep food available. Food and water and chemicals are, from my experience, the most important things that they always need to uh, stay flowing. So uh, always try and expand towards new deposits of chemicals and water. This is really, really vital. Um, Research-wise, go for whatever you please. I really grew fond of um, the technologies for aquadomes and biodomes. That's the last thing before I uh, close this, uh, this tutorial. Aquadomes and biodomes are great because they don't cost any upkeep. You just build them and then they produce uh, O2 or well biodomes convert CO2 into O2 and the aquadomes um, spawn cyanobacteria into the oceans which uh, does increase um, the O2 levels again if I'm not wrong but whatever but um, long story short they do cost you nothing except for the power to run them and that's why uh, they are my most favorite um, mid-game terraforming buildings so I hope that helped you out especially the logistics part um, is something well I'm quite happy with my logistics at this point um, using those um, things I told you here it's not perfect the game has a few kinks which definitely need a few more patches I'm afraid but well it's forgivable and the game is quite fun 
um, using hyperloops and such. And yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop them into the comments below. I really love to help out. And uh, if you know anything that uh, you felt like I should have talked about that, drop it down to there too as well, because I love to accumulate knowledge below tutorial videos. Apart from that, leave a like or a subscribe if you found that a helpful video. I would be deeply appreciating your support and, your, and I hope you're having a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, before I forget, you can uh, have a proper readout of your uh, production here. I didn't mention it because I, it's there, but I don't like working with it. But it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, last mention. You have a few readout um, windows here, but I didn't like them at all. Use them if, you've, <laughs> if you think they are useful for you. I don't like them. See you soon. Bye-bye.